Welcome to the Realized Live case study presentation given by Rocket Software and Yang Feng Automotive Interiors. We are going to speak today about the value of Team Center Automated Product Design Data Exchange. My name is Martin Davis. Um, I'm responsible for the product management of our B2B integration product suite. Over to you, Srini, to introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Srinivasan uh, Madlier. I lead product realization process IT COE team. We have a team of uh, 2025 members, cons including consultants spread across the whole world. Rocket Software is a global software business with 1,500 employees. We've been growing now for approaching 30 years and are pleased to be bringing you today the presentation with Yang Feng about how we've been working with them to lower their operating costs to enable their staff to concentrate on their business. We've achieved this through focus on automating a lot of the steps that their engineers, designers, and buyers would be taking manually to get CAD and related data from Team Center to and from their customers and suppliers. The software that we've deployed at Yang Feng integrates with Team Center. That integration has been developed over a period of years to enable the workflow of getting data in and out of Team Center to be more streamlined. That development has been done under our partnership with Siemens that's been in place now since 2005. So I'd like to quickly take this time, a uh, few minutes, and go over uh, the background of our company, uh, Yanfang Automotive Interiors. Uh, we are a global leader in the automotive interiors uh, supply space. Uh, we uh, supply to most uh, most of the major OEMs uh, in North America. We decided to work with Rocket Software uh, starting 2017-18 to roll out uh, the True Fusion integration in our PLM platform to all of our uh, tech centers in uh, all the three uh, regions, uh, allowing our users uh, who are uh, dealing with CAD exchange with our OEMs and suppliers to use Team Center to directly send their CAD information out and also receive it. Both it was a bi-directional exchange, not unidirectional. And uh, we have uh, already set up around 960 partners in our uh, Proof Vision enterprise uh, right now. Uh, we have 400 users and around 750 in the, when you say DB, it's talking about the databases. Some of them are like uh, automated uh, user accounts which receive the data from the external suppliers and uh, tool makers. And we have around, uh, as of today, we have around 3,500 transfers per month. Uh, that roughly equates to 350 GB of CAD data, which is being exchanged on a monthly basis. And uh, we, we plan to grow that over the next few years as our team start ramping up usage of this. Um, and we went live with this integration uh, um, around six months back. Uh, fall of last year. Today, uh, after we integrated with True Fusion inside our PLM platform, uh, no, most of the historically the file transfers, the CAD exchange, were happening outside of Team Center, where users had to take some information, extract it from Team Center, and then manually massage it and send it out. Uh, it was a very manual process. Uh, with this, uh, what we have done is it became a fully automated process uh, where the users were to just go and uh, it may, how their life has become much easier. And um, the it's both uh, complete automation of the import process. I mean, there's no manual intervention. It's a fully automated import coming from the suppliers or any any uh, sender uh, to our uh, True Fusion queue. It's a fully automated push from that queue to our uh, team center directly. And then uh, on the export side, there are a couple of different uh, different ways we export the data. Uh, we and we don't export only CAD also. So the, our engineering community wanted the ability to be able to export even non CAD, uh, like Microsoft Office documents, PDFs, and things like that uh, from Team Center. So we have enabled both on the export side, both CAD and non CAD.
this is our uh, original process before we uh, integrated and made it automated our uh, initial process uh, uh, was very manual as you can see in this uh, slide uh, it starts at the top uh, we had team center uh, we had data exchange teams uh, sitting in all of the regions who had to connect to team center uh, ex extract the cat data from team center into their hard disk or local network share using our uh, users computers the ones that was done then they had to go stand alone tfe client and manually process uh, upload that data which is on the network drive now into the tfe thing and then tfe exchange will send it to internet and from the internet it will go to the partner who was selected in the tfe client and then uh, the most critical gap which is there in this process which our engineering team wanted to address was from a uh, security standpoint we did not want users to extract the data from team center which is a corporate standard for managing cat data into the local pcs we wanted to eliminate that as much as possible um, but you can see here with this data exchange it is all of the time the data was being get, getting extracted into their uh, local drive which was a violation of our security rules which we wanted to put in place so that was one of the big driver for us to make it more automated with rocket so the drivers as you say is really were improved security but also with the automation of the process to save engineers and other users lots of time that they could spend on other high value activities rather than wasting time on these manual steps yeah this one uh, this one shows you the pros and cons of our uh, original process which was a manual process uh, you can see the it was very complicated uh, the rules the rules would differ depending upon which user is doing it we try to address it by putting in procedures in place but then it's those are manual procedures so whenever there is manual procedures everyone is free to interpret it their way and that added to the complexity of the exchange uh, so that was uh, it it the, it was like a the amount of time is the users were trying to do it was lower but the con was there was no traceability at all so a lot of times when the program teams will reach out to our exchange teams there was there was a confusion as to which version of the data was exchanged with the oems or which version of the data was received from the oems this is the high level uh, pro overview of the new process which we put in place working with the rocket team uh, you, you can see that this one is fully baked inside the team center uh, process capabilities itself so the user will uh, needs to uh, from his pc he just needs to connect to team center and uh, within his team center window he will select the select the right kind of revisions uh, which he wants to exchange with our oems and suppliers he'll send that data uh, to the tfe via the tfe perspective which is integrated inside team center once that is done uh, he just needs to in the tfe he needs to pick the recipient the right recipient uh, the right kind of target formats uh, we have some um, screenshots which will show you uh, show you those information in the next few slides under the bonnet of true fusion enterprise we we have this integration layer called compdm which is the engine really that gets data out of team center and processes data as Srini mentioned in the correct format required by the recipient which could be a supplier or a customer and that's where the complex mapping of OEM naming conventions for example is achieved so that Yang Feng are able to be compliant in in their um, delivery of their design data back to their customers so oh, you can see uh, on the uh, left hand side uh, you see our team center uh, team center screen uh, screenshot which shows uh, how at a end item uh, we have this concept of end items and components uh, so here the user is trying to stand on the stand on the end item revision and he is selecting something called as a uh, form he selects a form to identify to the tfa uh, integration that this is the customer and this is the naming convention which i want the cat data to follow when i am sending it what would happen is uh, the user can stand on this uh, item revision sent it to the 
enterprise team center view as is mentioned in the last bullet point here and then uh, teams uh, the integration knows that which are all the items that is to be sent uh, there is automatic selection of all the items uh, by the plugin or uh, team center enterprise plugin it will show you the screenshots or how it looks like on a true vision enterprise view so this is the view you can see here it shows you a a uh, full exploded uh, one of a component uh, which has uh, i think assembly which has two components and on the right hand side there you see that there is a cat system where the oem has been mapped there is a column for oem name you select the oem name and then there is a another selection of uh, in the white screen there it will show another the target system what is the target system uh, and uh, whether it's a Katia, whether it is NX or whether we need to send with NX, whether we need to generate some uh, CAD quality, whether we need to do some CAD quality checks also before we send it out. All those information the user needs to select uh, in those screens, and once he selects those, uh, the and he hits the finish button in the bottom, uh, the one in green, the user will then go ahead. Uh, the user's task is done. all those team members can be now redeployed to more productive activities so this process is on the other side uh, the all the process which we spoke about uh, the last few slides is on the export this one is more on the import uh, you can see uh, the import is not drastically different from the export is the same same uh, solution components i uh, uh, which is both the uh, tfe and the compdm is the same components which are being used so the data uh, we have uh, our oems and uh, our suppliers they have uh, they have their recipients within the yanfang uh, users who are set up in the tfe portal so they pick them and they'll send the information down their way so tfe will go ahead and automatically import uh, that data using the jobs here and once the jobs come in then the automatic renaming of the cat files to match our conventions uh, happens and also there are uh, there are uh data scenarios we have set up where there are automatic transformation of some uh certain oem packages uh, some oems uh, especially in europe they have their own defined packages or uh, data structures which they use so we are uh, we have done a, a mapping so that even those oems who have specific uh package requirements uh, we are mapping them to the right team center structure we preserve the incoming file names uh, those are not lost those are preserved in our data exchange form uh, once those data exchange forms are created uh, then the user uh, it allows us to precisely uh, uh, able to trace what was the file name which was received where it was received who sent it the date when it was sent so we are basically able to do if, in case if there are some issues uh, which are happening because of the data all those can be addressed so that's that is that is a big help for us and even for the uh, so the once that data comes in uh, we have a ability on the true vision portal itself to create uh, to create and report uh, from there also for all of the imported data and uh, it also allows uh, uh, provides the basic information to the plm users they don't have to go to exchange or tcra they can get some of the base information about the job ids those were all have been all added in set in set reason sure uh, as you can see uh, we have a big list of uh, rows by this automated process uh, and then uh, there is a, the first and most important thing is uh, team center as a plm platform always uh, promotes the usage of the uh, plm as a single source of truth uh, so that's what we are accomplishing with this so once we start, once we integrate the rocket software's capabilities inside the platform uh the cad exchange with the oems is all coming from a single source so we have single location to go to get a get a grips uh, on both the imported and also the exported data and uh, the next thing is obviously the exact state of the data that's another important thing which we wanted uh, our engineering teams uh, had uh, wanted to uh, make sure that whatever is the data which is being exchanged that state is not changed at all that's we actually lock it down after that export is done so that we have a proper archive of what we as a company has delivered our oems or our suppliers so that there is uh, there is no way that those doc- those data will be tampered with 
we know what we have sent exactly and when it was sent and by whom it was sent so that exact data state of the data is present now in team center and uh, what happens uh, another advantage is all of this uh, information data which we are exchanging with our oems those are coming from our plm data itself and we that that way we are able to correlate so if i am a tfe or uh, if i am a plm user i can go to the data exchange form and i know how many times the data was exchanged uh, with my uh, with my oems whether it was done two times in a day or uh, two times in a week three times in a week so all that information is there so for each and every transfer there is a data exchange form which is created and then the next thing is obviously the the basic transfer uh, job information that is available to all of our team center users uh, so even if a engineering manager wants to know what was the job number which was sent he can go and get that information from team center and it provides us a great traceability as i mentioned before and the best part of it is the compidm integration it allows us to rename the data which has been extracted defined using that compidm it is a configurable tool to allow us to map different kind of uh, rule sets we have so many different rule sets for each oem which we are able to set it up uh, based on the customer requirements every time you want to send some data you have to come to team center and upload it Uh, some users feel that we had had to do it uh, in team center historically they didn't have to do it a uh, lot of people were working out of flat files and sending it data but now all of the data has to be uploaded to team center before export uh, it is not it's not like a it's not a issue with the solution but it's more of a team centers uh, uh, decision which wifi is process decision to drive everything from one single source of truth it's not a it's not a a uh, negative thing on the solution itself it was a direction which our leadership took uh, the engineering leadership yeah so i think in conclusion uh, what i wanted to say is uh, we uh, our team uh, which work worked very hard to enable this integration working with the rocket team we learned a lot uh, but lot of the uh, lot of the challenges uh, which we faced were not with the tool uh, per se itself a lot of the challenges were more trying to define the requirements uh, the the we struggled to get the requirements processes nailed down because there's so much variation in each region each region operates their own way everyone uh, there was no uh, uh, not a good uh, handle on how different oems needs are there uh, each oem is different we started with europe uh, europe region then we are trying to take it to north america uh so the those were our challenges which we faced so we did solve those uh, so our decision which we made at uh, the start of the project was we don't want to define a solution just for one region we want uh, we wanted this solution to work for global global uh, oems and for global locations so, so irrespective of if you are in europe if you are north america or apec the same solution flow should work so everyone should be able to come to team center uh, work on their program cad data in team center and exchange so we were able to accomplish that and uh, the true vision integration itself has a uh, lot of uh, capabilities configuration options uh, which we initially were trying to understand working with rocket software uh, that allowed us to granular uh, control the setup of business cases finally we were able to do it uh, on time and um, we had a target of deploy uh, rolling it out uh, uh, by start of this year uh, we hit that with the target uh, it took some uh, few months to stabilize but i think we are in the stabilization phase right now uh, we are trying to stabilize it and uh, go forward from there the system is in production now it's a living breathing system uh, and it's getting continuously adapted right so we we will uh, there might be some data setups which were missed by the by our smes so we when we are we run those into the data setup we work with the smes immediately and take uh, measures so that we can Tweak the, tweak the configurations and get do make the deployments into production immediately. And uh, the last and not the least point is important. Express requires less interaction time because lot of this activity is all process automatically. So user does need to provide the key inputs that is needed to the process. Everything else is done automatically. The user is not involved. The user doesn't have to wait for any of those things. Once the process is completed, he gets an email that the process is completed. He just needs to go back and verify it whether the the recipient received the data if it's a ex, if it's a export or if he is uh, getting um, getting an import he can confirm it to to the sender that yes he received the data and it looks to be right. 
Great, Srinis. Thanks for spending time with us today.